Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. The situation is critical. Michigan hospitals issue an urgent warning to parents tonight as cases of RSV surge across our state. Topping tonight's news at 5, the Michigan Hospital Association says parents need to take precautions right now because hospitals are running out of room. Yeah, they say 89% of pediatric ICU beds are occupied statewide and the situation isn't getting any better. So let's get to Sean Lay. He's live tonight and Sean hospitals are putting visitor restrictions in place too. Let's start right with that. Cornwell Health East, formerly Beaumont, starting on Monday, kids five and under cannot go in to visit anyone fears of spreading the virus. Parents being asked by multiple health systems to help in this RSV situation by having their kids wash their hands, get the vaccinated for flu and COVID, and also keep the kids home if they are sick. All this as a family run business rocked by the death of a six year old son of a coworker who died of RSV. We want to show you their effort to help that hurting family. Whether you're a parent, whether you're not a parent, I mean, I don't think there's anyone that's heard this story that just hasn't really been, um, you know, impacted by it and really taken a step back and um, felt for this family. Ellen Bloom is with the family owned business Offshore Spars, a sailboat mask manufacturer in New Baltimore. When the tragic news hit this week that a six year old boy became the area's first RSV patient to not survive the illness, it hit home at Offshore. The boy's father works with them. Offshore Spars now with this GoFundMe to help this family during this horrible time. Really, we just want to take care of our team member and his family and um, you know, give them as much financial support as we can during this time because, you know, we want to allow, you know, make sure that he can be off of work and just go be with his family and take care of, you know, any funeral expenses. RSV hitting kids around two to four years old hard around Metro Detroit. The worst that I've seen in my 25 years. Chief of Pediatrics at Corwell Health East, formerly Beaumont, Dr. Matthew Denenberg tells us pediatric beds are filling up fast. We are holding patients in our emergency department that are waiting for beds upstairs because the inpatient units are, are full and the PICU is at capacity. Now, it's worth repeating, Kimberly, you said 89% of beds in Michigan, ICU and pediatric beds full right now of kids fighting this RSV virus. The bulk of those are in mid-Michigan and right here in Metro Detroit. Back to you. So just scary, Sean. And health officials say this situation makes vaccinations so much more important, too. Yeah, there's no RSV vaccination. Working on that might be ready by this time next year. But they are saying get your kids vaccinated for COVID and the flu because they don't want those things on top of mm -hmm. RSV. Would not be good for younger kids and it would not be good for the hospital systems already full. That's right. And we'll put that GoFundMe information for that six-year-old little boy's family on That's our right. website. Click on Detroit.com. Sean, thank you. All right, now let's move to Oak Park in Oakland County, where an attorney has been charged with the murder of a well-known local jeweler. Marco Visbikas has been charged with the murder of Dan Hutchinson, the owner of Hutch's Jewelry. Megan Woods live with this story tonight. It's just, it's a bizarre case, Megan. It is a Devin Kimberly Bisbekis is actually a managing partner at a personal injury law firm, but today in court, he was the one in handcuffs. He will remain behind bars as that judge today denied his bond. Today, Marco Michael Bisbekis is charged with premeditated murder, first degree, possession of a firearm and a commission of a felony and conspiracy to commit murder. Each charge carries a sentence of life without parole. Bisbekis is the managing partner here at All Law in Southfield on Greenfield. There are other attorneys who work at the firm, but when we knocked on their door and called to see what they had to say, there was no answer. Bisbekis is accused of being the mastermind behind the murder of Dan Hutchinson, also known as Hutch, and the owner of Hutch's Jewelry. Back in June, he was shot and killed while sitting inside this GMC Yukon Denali outside of his shop on Greenfield Road, just north of 8 Mile. It's alleged 44-year-old Roy Larry was the man who pulled the trigger. He's charged with first-degree murder and felony firearm. 
Now, Hutch's jury did uh, decline to comment about this development. As for Bisbekis, the Michigan Bar Association, according to them, their, his uh, license to practice law is still in good standing, but of course, that could change. We did reach out to the state's attorney disciplinary board, but have not heard back to see how this process uh, goes along. But as for right now, live in Oak Park, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Yeah, okay, Megan. All right, now to decision in 2022 and a lawsuit challenging Detroit's absentee voting process is really coming down to the 11th hour with just, what, three days to go. Yeah, uh, that lawsuit filed by Secretary of State candidate Christina Caramo would require Detroit absentee ballots to be thrown out and force people to vote in person, though they kind of changed what they were requesting out of all of this today. Complicated case, Grant Herms following it live from Midtown. Uh, those ballot drop boxes, though, are getting busy, Grant. Yeah, they really are, and that's what's at the heart of this case, or at least it was when this all started. If this goes the way Karama wants it to go, tens of thousands of Detroiters who have already voted would have to spoil their ballot and vote in person or have to go to their local clerk's office on Election Day, something they didn't want to do to prove that they are who they said they were on that ballot. Now, all of this means that we are likely going to see a much more forceful challenge to this election, even as the votes are counted here in Detroit. Um, Arguments coming to an end in a major case in Detroit. The Republican candidate for Secretary of State, Christina Caramo, suing over absentee ballots in the city, although only one of the people named in the suit was actually from Detroit. After three days of heated argument, both sides making their final points. Plaintiffs based on conjecture, innuendo, and half-baked conspiracy theories stormed into this court alleging wrongdoing. And for the record, the plaintiffs have produced no evidence. It wasn't that we didn't have plaintiffs to present testimony, but we were very limited in what this court allowed. The judge scolding Karamo's attorneys, who were unable to say in court what they wanted done if they should win. When asked by the judge, what's the relief you're asking for? I don't get an answer. The Detroit case follows another challenge against the state's rules for poll watchers. That was thrown out by the state Supreme Court in a victory for Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. In Flint, a judge tossing out a case there about claims there weren't enough Republican poll challengers and election denying groups have allegedly begun to challenge votes. The worry now is whether these court cases are signs of things to come after the election. What we have always been afraid of is that they show up at a place like Huntington and try to challenge a bunch of voters where there's no time to review anything. The election already in court before the votes have even been counted. And late this afternoon, Attorney General Dana Nessel and the Michigan Democratic Party filed in support of the city of Detroit here. And Detroit clerk Janice Winfrey is calling for sanctions to the tune of more than $11,000 to be levied against Karamo's attorneys. According to the judge's office this afternoon, we expect his opinion to be a written opinion that will be handed down on Monday, the day before the election. Devin? Uh, uh, which is wild, of course, uh, to wait word for right before zero hour. But uh, Grant, challenges like these have become increasingly common at the local level. You and I were talking about earlier today what you're hearing about challenges already pouring in across Wayne County. Yeah, specifically in Canton Township, I was told to the clerk there that they got 143 challenges already. And that clerk told me that among his friends who are Wayne County clerks, nearly all of them have gotten similar challenges like this. Now, it's worth pointing out that this isn't actually how ballots and votes get challenged, not in these written ways. But these clerks still respond to these, and they are going to be spending time doing that over the weekend when so much work is left to be done ahead of the election next week. These next are week. challenges on individual absentee votes that have already been cast, yes. correct? Yes, yeah, correct. Wow. Correct. There are challenges on individual votes that have already been cast. They're challenging names and dates based on data. They think they see things in there, but still not the proper way to do this. And still clerks will be responding to these when they should be doing other things. Wow. Uh, that kind of lights the runway for what could yeah. be a wild week uh, yeah, ahead. Yeah. All right, Grant. Indeed. Okay. Well, in just a matter of weeks, the Powerball jackpot has gone from big to astronomical to record setting. Tomorrow night's jackpot now sits at $1.6 billion. So that puts the cash option at $782 million. Tickets for Saturday's drawing are available until 945 Saturday night. And we'll have the winning numbers for you tomorrow night at 11.
All right, now to the weather. We kick off the weekend with a live look from our Mount Clemens Sky Cam. It's just been beautiful, but we do have some wind and rain on the way. In fact, a wind advisory set to go into effect uh, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Let's get over to Brian Sherman and a first look at the forewarned forecast. Hi, Brian. Hi there, Kimberly and Devin. Good Friday evening, everyone. So far, a nice day across the neighborhood today. Temperatures into the 70s for everybody here, starting off 73 right now, City Airport, as well as over at Metro Airport. 71 right now in Ann Arbor, as well as in Howell. 71 working over into Flint, one of our cooler spots, 63 right now as you're working over into Gross Eel. Enjoy this because we're going to be back into the 70s tomorrow, but we are going to bring those gusty winds into the forecast right now. Sustained winds across all of southeastern Michigan, 10 to upwards of 20, even 25 miles an hour right now over at Metro Airport out of the due south and expect these numbers to go much higher with that wind advisory kicking into play as we head into tomorrow. That's all thanks to a very strong frontal boundary well off to the west for right now. This is going to roll right into our region tonight, bringing us that wind and rain. We'll talk more about the timing and the end of the weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Devin and Kim. All right, Brian. Fire destroys a vacant church overnight. That is just part of the story. New tonight, why crews are scrambling to get to the scene well after the flames were put out. Also, it's become such a massive business here in Metro Detroit. It's not cars. New tonight, how the rising interest rates are really putting the squeeze on the mortgage industry. Priya. Two massive construction projects to get around this weekend. Tonight, we're breaking down detours and whether there's any hope on the horizon.